Merciful Father, we are grateful to you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Lord, it is your word that cleanses, that washes, that sanctifies. Father, we have come unto you, O Lord, not because we are perfect, but because we want to be made perfect. Perfect our lives, O God, through thy word. Be merciful to us, Father. Teach us what it means to be humble. Give us the grace to be truly humble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so our text is Genesis, Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16. We are looking at true humility. True humility. Hey, hey, hey. hey all right. True humility. <laughs> I will say something later on. Uh, Genesis chapter 16. Um, we will look at verse 3 to 5. And then later we'll come back and look at verse 8 to 9. So let me read verse 3 to 5. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Cana, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. And he went unto Hagar, and she conceived, and, she, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah, Sarah said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. Um, so when you look at this scripture, Sarah had not been able to conceive and suddenly one day she gave a maid to Abraham. Okay, their name had not changed at that time, so pardon me, but maybe I should be calling them by their new name. So Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham and she conceived. Now, but we are looking at this story to understand humility. The Bible says that in verse 4, when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. It means that before she conceived, she was humble, she was obedient, she was submissive, she does everything they ask her to do. But suddenly she discovered that now she is the one who had conceived for Abraham. And there was nothing our boss could say to her again. What is the lesson here about humility? We will know you are humble when you have something. <laughs> when you are somebody. You see, many people are not humble, but circumstances have humbled them. Many are not humble, but circumstance has humbled them. When she was a house girl, without any connection to Abraham, she was humble. That humility is not humility. It is circumstantial humility. That means she's been humble. She is not humbled. You see, there's a difference between you being humble. And you and so and you being humbled. You can be humbled and you can be humble. Hagar was not a humble person, but she behaved like she was a humble person when she had no leverage, when she had no say. So let me be let me use examples you can relate with. When a man wants to marry a woman, do you know most men are humble? <laughs> when most men are looking for a woman, when they have interest in a woman, they are very humble. 
In fact, to the point of foolishness where the man will even kneel down and carry one small ring and say that he's proposing. That same man is the same man that will beat that woman, that will slap that woman, that will send her out, that will maltreat her, that will do all of that. But why was he humble? Why does he appear humble initially? He was looking for something. So if you don't understand this, you will misinterpret people that circumstance have humbled as if they are a humble person. Now see, the way it happens with man is the same thing it happens to a woman. When a woman is in her prime, she may be very proud. Everybody is trying to speak to her. She's very beautiful. She's going here and there. Particularly, she's beautiful. In the eyes of man. I say that because there is no parameter for beauty. God created every man to look unique. Why will I say A is more beautiful than B? I'm judging. Can I say that lion is more beautiful than gorilla? No, God created the gorilla to look exactly like that. And the gorilla is beautiful like that. The ape is beautiful like that. The monkey is beautiful the way they are looking. So God deliberately designed you to look exactly the way you look. It is in the world system that we judge people and say, you are not beautiful. You must be tall to be beautiful. You must have figure eight. You must be able to walk like a cat. It's just foolishness. Anyway, so when she's beautiful, she's not humble. But then if life hits her and she's going to 45, She's not married. Even men that in the past, she will say this man cannot, who is this man to talk to me? Now, if that man should sneeze, you say, are you, are you calling me? <laughs> Even if such a man should just sneeze, she's like, are you calling me? No, I was just sneezing. He appears as if she's humble. She's not. Circumstance as humble that please be patient we are going somewhere so you need to understand that you can either be humble or circumstance can humble you the intention of god is not for circumstance to humble us the intention of god is that we should become humble and um sometimes that's why you see God, he, he always waits to prove a man. When God chose Saul to be king over Israel, did you know that Saul was so humble? He couldn't even lift his face up. He said he was not worthy. His tribe was the smallest tribe. But when he became king, he became proud. He became arrogant. When you study the book of Kings, it's the same story. Men will appear humble. But when they eventually get power, money, or wealth, they will show their true color. Sometimes women are confused. They say that, look at, he, he used to be humble. He used to be quiet. No, he wasn't humble. Because he wanted to marry you, circumstance, circumstance humbled him. Now that he's in marriage, he will show you Pepe. <laughs> he will let you know that he's a man. <laughs> so don't, that's why you need great, you need mercy to marry right. There are many fake things that looks like original. Many fake people that look like original. That's why you need a study like this. You can see a beggar. Every beggar looks humble. Have you not noticed? Every beggar looks humble. 
but they are not humble. They have been humbled by circumstance. We need to understand what humility is not before we can then begin to understand what is humility. So you need to ask yourself, are you humble because of circumstance? Or that is who you really are? Or if you have opportunity, you will have showed them who you truly are. Now, let's look at the book of James. We will come back to Genesis now and begin to now see. So what exactly is, is true humility? You know, and it's the same thing. In, see, this thing we are saying, it applies in every facet of human life. Even in preaching, a preacher that is just starting, maybe God has called him as a pastor, he's trying to build a church. I mean, congregation, human being, I'm not talking of building. He's trying to raise a people. He may be very humble. He may come and greet you in your house. You know, he may clean the chair. He may do all of those things. But then suddenly, people begin to come. Money is coming in. Fame and influence. That same man, you will not have access to him again. That same man that if he sees your missed call, he will instantly call back. That same pastor, <laughs> you won't even know his number. <laughs> you won't know his number. Talk, not to talk of greeting. Not to talk of uh, dialing his number. What is happening? It was circumstance that made him humble. He wasn't humble. <laughs> In life, circumstance can humble us. But God does not intend that circumstance should humble us. So what is true humility? Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 10. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 10. Look at what it says. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Do you see now? Do you see the difference between somebody that is humbled by circumstance and true humility? True humility is you humbling yourself. Not circumstance humbling you. True humility is you humbling yourself in every circumstance. Not circumstance humbling you. True humility is also done in the sight of the Lord, not in the sight of men. A truly humble person does not care to be seen by men as being humble. He cares that God should see his humility. He says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, not in the sight of men. True humility is not displayed for show. True humility is not displayed for men to see you. This person is conscious of the presence of God in his life, in her life, and so walks humbly before God. So even when he's before men, he is also before God. Circumstance is not what humbles this person. This person is a humble person. He says, humble yourself. Don't allow circumstance to humble you. <laughs> humble yourself and he shall lift you up. Why is that? <laughs> Do you know why most people don't want to be humble? Humility puts you down. Humility, he puts you down. You don't want to greet somebody that is 
that you are older than. But when you greet somebody that you are older than, it looks as if you've reduced yourself. You are greeting somebody that you are older than that person. That's why the scripture is saying that see, it is God that lifts a humble person. Don't expect men to reward your humility. Humility will reduce you in the sight of men, but God will lift you. If you don't understand this, you will struggle to be humble. Because you won't see the point in being humble. But you must understand that humility is done in the sight of God, not in the sight of men. And it is God that lifts a humble man. Because a humble man will actually go down. And if God does not lift that man up, he will remain down. So, God is committed to lift a humble man. <laughs> Let's look at Philippians 2 8. And this one, this time I read that scripture, I feel unworthy reading it. <laughs> Can you believe that? There are some scripture I read and I feel unworthy reading it. Philippians 2 8. Or let's read it from verse 6 to have a context. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. In fact, we can even get to verse 9 because it will just it will capture everything we are looking at. So Philippians 2, 6 to 9. There is no better person to exemplify humility than Jesus. So let's look at Jesus. Remember where we are coming from, James. He says, humble yourselves. Humble yourself before God. Let's look at Jesus. Philippians 2, 6 to 9. Thank you. He says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You see, you need to understand humility. Humility is coming from a height. It's coming down from a height. Now, the highest height a man can come down from is the height of God. And we are not God. Jesus is equal with God. But the Bible says he didn't think of it as anything, but verse 7, but made himself of no reputation. It wasn't that circumstance made him of no re reputation. He made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. He was the one doing this to himself. Jesus. So I don't know the class that you think you are. This is Jesus doing this to himself. He took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. You, you don't know what it means for God to be a man. <laughs> it's like. Even though this example is not perfect, but probably is the best way I can illustrate it. It's like a human being. He wants to save all the rats. And so decided to become a rat. So when the, when the human being shows up on earth, he looks like a rat that everybody can pursue and hit his head and set trap for. But look at verse 8. Now, you will think that all of this, Jesus has brought himself down, down enough. But verse 8 says, I'm being found in the fashion as a man. As a man, he humbled himself. Did you see? James says, humble yourself. The Bible says concerning Jesus, he humbled himself. Nobody will humble you, brethren. You are the one that must humble yourself. Don't allow circumstance to humble you. Humble yourself. Jesus humbled himself. The scripture says, humble yourself. Come down from the height that you think you are. And I tell you, <laughs> when you think you have something, that's when you are at greatest risk of not wanting to humble yourself. You know, even the country you live can be a pride. Can be a pride. I, you know, I was, um, you know, it's, 
It's good to be spiritual. <laughs> I was somewhere last year. And people, we, you know, um, during the festive period or so. So people who came from different parts of the world, we met. As we met, I, I knew instantly that before we will go far in any conversation, all these people, we show those of us that uh, we are in Nigeria, that they came from one country or the other. <laughs> so I was watching. So as soon as we were exchanging greetings and so on, or before we could say anything, somebody just brought one conversation that, you know, in the U.S., so we all knew this one is in the U.S. <laughs> Another person just said, you know, uh, Sweden is, uh, we know this one is, is from Sweden. And I'm telling you, every one of them find the excuse of saying something that revealed the country they came from. <laughs> ah. Well, those of us from Nigeria, we were already humbled by circumstance. <laughs> what is the pride of saying you are from Nigeria? Circumstance has humbled all of us. So we were humble. <laughs> we kept quiet. <laughs> but look at Jesus. He humbled himself and became obedient unto them. There is a link between humility and obedience you are not humble if you are not obedient some of you think you are humble you pride yourself as a humble person one of the signs of a humble person is obedience you can't be somebody that you will read the teachings of christ and you will not do it you are not humble a humble person is also an obedient person we will see actively this person living out the word of God in his or her life. It takes humility. It takes humility to be obedient to God. Did you know that obedient to God will humble you? There are people that don't want to talk to you. But because you want to obey the word of God, you don't want to keep malice. You will have to greet them. When you greet them, it will appear as if it will appear as if they have the upper hand. You see what humility does. Look at it. Jesus said, do good to them that hate you. Now, it will take humility to obey that. Because a person that hates you is doing evil towards you. You are now doing good. You will look like a fool. And people don't want to look like a fool. So it, it will take humility to obey. You can't be humble and not be obedient. To the degree to which you are obeying the word of God and living by the teachings of Christ, you are, it is to that degree that you are humble. Humility is not when you do like this. I'm, I'm a humble man. <laughs> That's not humility. Anybody can do that. <laughs> and people will see, they'll say, ah, he's a very humble man. Humble man that doesn't obey God. What is the point of the humility? So he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Humility will be revealed in obedience. So now, do you know now that it's easy now to judge yourself. Are you humble? You now know the answer. It's very easy. If I ask you, are you humble? You will know the answer. Whether you are humble or not, you will know. Because it will reveal, it will be revealed in your commitment to the word of God. It takes obedience to be committed to the word of God. You will become humble. <laughs> You know, maybe you may have heard this. Before I became born again, one of my friends, 
he gave me money to help him buy a CD player at that time. At that time, you know, there was no MP3, iPod, and so on. So it's, it's these big CD players, two changers. You know, the way we young boys, we love to have that in those days. <clears throat> so I was traveling to Lagos to get it. I wanted to get one for myself also. So he gave me money. So I got one for myself and I got one for him. But here is the but. <clears throat> I bought his own slightly cheaper than the money he gave to me. <laughs> but when I got back, I told him that I got it at the exact price. So that means I spent the change remaining. <laughs> then, it wasn't up to a week after that event that I became born again. He comes to my house all the time so we always talk about the cd player that oh you know shago got me a very good cd player and you won't believe it he got it at so 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 price and then like you know he, he, looking at me like i should confirm that yes that's how much i got <laughs> i couldn't speak again <laughs> i became restless so after a lot of struggle I had to go and take the exact amount remaining that I should have given to him. And I went to him. You think it was easy? It wasn't easy. But I went to him. And I said, I'm very sorry. You see this CD? I, I didn't buy it at the price I told you I bought it. But you see, I'm now born again. <laughs> I said, you see, I'm now born again. I'm sorry. This is the balance of your money. I said, no, 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 no. We are friends. There is no big deal about that. I said, I know. I know you won't want it. But this one, you must accept it so that my conscience can rest, please. <laughs> so after insisting, he took the money. He can never forget that experience. And unknown to me, that experience probably, probably, truly confirmed to him that this, my friend, is truly born again. <laughs> But did you know that it was quite humiliating for me to go and do that? It wasn't easy, but I wanted to obey. What then am I saying? You can't be humble and not be obedient. Obedience would demand humility. Obedient would demand humility. There are instruction that at least god is saying to you go and do this go and take care of this go and resolve this you don't want to do it because you are not humble because when you do it it will humble you so you don't want to do it you don't want to say sorry you don't want to say i'm sorry because it will humble you brethren jesus has set us an example he humbled himself and became obedient there can't be any better way about it. A humble person is an obedient person. If you are humble, you'll be obedient. Let's look at more scriptures, right? Let's look at more scriptures. Um, Matthew 23, verse 12. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12. He says, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Again, you see the consistency of scriptures. He says, humble thyself. Jesus, humble himself. Here he says, whosoever shall humble himself. And again, you will also see that immediately he assured you that if you go through that humiliating process of obedience is going to lift you and i tell you god is faithful he's going to lift you see in those days for me to go and give that money to my friend i thought of many things i was afraid but today i'm happy i did it i'm even saying it publicly there's no problem it has become a testimony 
my friend did that i thought he will look down on me he will think that i'm a bad person on the contrary he could probably trust me with his life now so you see immediately he assured you once where there is humility there is going to be exhortation the key to exhortation is humility the key to more exhortation is humility so when god lifts you don't also become like this keep going down he will keep lifting you keep going down you keep going down god will keep lifting you just keep going down sometimes the mistake we make is that when god begins to lift us we too we begin to lift ourselves <laughs> and god said this one cannot lift himself bro. let's leave him let's leave her <laughs> let's look at matthew 18 4 matthew chapter 18 verse 4 how do the british call four do they say four i think it's four matthew 18 verse 4 it says whosoever therefore shall humble himself it's too consistent whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is the greatest in the kingdom of god can you see all the consistency one it is you that humble yourself it is not circumstance when circumstance humble you you are not humble have you seen people who are waiting for the judge to deliver their judgment how they will they will stand Tom will not even dare look up they are not humble circumstance has humbled them that's not the humility we are looking for so he says whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child look at what humility does to you it reduces you to a child humility will reduce you to a child but then you will immediately see the promise of god the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven that means that will be uplifting for a humble person it's too consistent it's too consistent let's look at first peter 5 6 first peter chapter 5 and uh, verse 6 <laughs> hey. indeed it's only a foolish man that says the bible is not divinely inspired <clears throat> First Peter 5 6. Look at what it says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exhort you in due time. Consistent. Number one, it is you again that must humble yourself. Number two, you are humbling yourself in the sight of God. Here he says, under the mighty hand of God. That means you are not looking at men, you are looking at God. We find it difficult to humble ourselves because we see men, we do not see God. And then again, you see immediately, it says, that he may exhort you in due time. This one provided us with additional information. One, he establishes again that it is God that exhorts a humble man. Two, you may not have that exhortation immediately. You may suffer humiliation on the te temporarily, but God consistently will lift a humble person. God will lift a humble person. You know why you are not obedient as a wife? Is this problem? Is this problem? You don't want to bring yourself down. So the world system is teaching you to lift yourself against your husband. You, want, you didn't understand that humility is for God. It is not for the man. So you couldn't humble yourself. There are some women that appear so humble. They are not humble. They don't have a job. It is the man that pays school fees. It is the man that feeds them, that clothes them, that house them. Why would they misbehave? <laughs> so they are very humble. They are not humble. Circumstance has humbled them. Have you now heard all these stories that I took a woman from Africa? She was nothing. She was a, she was very humble. She was very nice. Then we got to Europe and all of a sudden, 
she throws me out of my house. <laughs> all of a sudden, she has left me. All of a sudden, she has done this. I'm not saying in all cases, but I can assure you one thing is consistent. Many of those women back home did not have access to the things they have access to in Europe, in America, in Canada. So when they now have access to express themselves, you know, if you, for example, money allows you to express yourself. If you don't have money, you may not be able to express yourself. But when you have money, when you have money, you can, your real self is that, what is all of this? Let me go and get my own house and move out of this man house. That's your real self. When you have money, you will express yourself like that. But when you don't have money, circumstance will humble you. You will appear as if you are humble. The same thing happens even to men that marries and travel out. It happens a lot. Because you don't truly know a person until that person has means of expression. A woman here knows that if he go and reports you to the police that uh, this is what my husband... See, the police here, they are dealing with too many serious issues for you to be bringing your domestic problem. But in some country, if a woman go and report that they beat her, it's an emergency. It's as, if, it's as if some terrorists have entered their country. They take it as a serious matter. They give restraining order. They arrest the man. They jail the man. They do all kinds of things. So a woman suddenly see that I have this kind of power. She can express herself because she will now express who truly she is. It's not that she became bad. It's not that that country corrupt her. No. She has finally found a means of expression. Many of you don't even know yourself. <laughs> because you don't yet have a means of expression. When you have a means of expression, you will know. Have you not seen too many times, even politicians, they will appear humble. It's not that they were faking that humility. Circumstance has humbled them. They need your vote. The same man, he doesn't even want to listen to you once he gets to power. But look at Jesus. He was at the highest level of power and he humbled himself. That's what God is looking for. Circumstance didn't humble Jesus. Jesus humbled himself. He says that he may exhort you in due time. In due time. You know, I used to say that there are some scripture in the Bible, just one verse. If we, we apply it in our marriage, our marriage will be successful. This is one of it. Many problems in marriage, do you know it's pride? <laughs> I know men that can never say sorry. Just sorry. In some marriage, sorry is like a song. Ah, dear, what did you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a song. But some men can never say sorry. But that same man, let him lose his job and start depending on the income of his wife. Suddenly, he will now begin to sing sorry. He is not, he is not truly sorry. Circumstance has humbled him. No, there are different, different ways. There are different ways we exhibit pride in marriage. All of a sudden, I can't serve him. His food is there. If you like, let him go and take it. Go and serve it. Leave God to lift you. Stop lifting yourself. It's a grave, it's a great danger that you are lifting yourself. You know the right thing to do, but you don't, you don't want to appear humble. <laughs> you don't want to go low. Go and do it. It is God that lifts. If you are humble, you will be submissive. 
What did the Bible say? Wife, submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. If you are humble, you will obey that scripture. You don't obey because you are not a humble person. Humility will always lead to obedience. Because you see, humility will bring you down temporarily. That's why you don't want to humble. You want to prove to him that you both went to school. And that you too, you have something in your head. <laughs> so you are fighting for yourself. You don't need that. You are not submitting to a man. He says, as unto the Lord. It's like people miss that part. All our submission, our humility. Did you know that it is unto God? He said, under God. In the sight of God. In the sight of God. <laughs> Do you know the Bible says God resists the proud? He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. We are coming to the, to the need for us to be humble. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 6, verse 3. Proverbs 6, 3. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 3. It says, Do this now, my son. Deliver thyself when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. When you have offended somebody, go and humble yourself. My wife, I am sorry. Many of you, husband, you can't apologize to your wife because of pride. He says, don't waste time. Go and humble yourself. Go and humble yourself. God is saying to somebody now, go and humble yourself. Go and humble yourself. See, <clears throat> let's, let's quickly go to Genesis. Genesis. That passage in Genesis, Genesis 16. We read five, we read three to five. Now let's look at Genesis 16. We will now look at eight. 8 to 9. Genesis 16, verse 8 to 9. You will see, you know, the proverb we are coming from says, Go humble thyself. Let's look at what they said to Haggai. And the angel of the Lord, uh, where, where, where? Verse 8, sorry, verse 8. And he said, Haggai, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou, and whither will thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hand. Return. Go and submit yourself. You don't want to submit yourself. Go and submit yourself under her hand. Running away is not the issue. Do you know there are people that they've been running away from obedience? <laughs> when obedience is demanded, they run away. When they get to another place, obedience is demanded, they run away. So they've been running away, running away. And God told the guy, no, running away is not the solution. Go and submit to your boss. She was maltreating her. Can you believe it? Sarah was maltreating her. And the angel of the Lord said, go and submit. Running away is not the issue. <laughs> May we receive understanding? <laughs> Did you know that because she submitted, because she submitted, a guy became blessed. A guy almost received a covenant close to the stature of the covenant that Isaac received. Did the angel, did God not see the maltreatment? Yet God said, God said to her, go and submit yourself. Submission is not to the man that treats you right. It's an obedience to God. Just the same way love is not for a, you know, it is pride that you don't want to love a woman that is not respecting you. God didn't say, love your wife 
that is respectful. He said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Look at it. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. You have to give yourself for your wife. You are not to give your wife away. Many, of, many men are giving themselves to their family. You know, I don't understand how a mother we call his son. And I don't know what those mother will say to that son. And that son will start hating his own wife. The wife that he saw by himself. And said he wants to marry by himself. And then he married the wife. And then one mother will call him and say something. You know, um, I hear things a lot now. <laughs> I hear things a lot. A woman and her husband, they were doing well. Then the mother-in-law called her son. The wife didn't know what they discussed. But the son came back and his attitude changed. And she, the wife thought it was a joke. He said, mommy said, when, when she sent food, you didn't call to say thank you. And so what? Well, that's not a big deal. As a wise husband, what are you supposed to do? Oh, mommy, please, 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 don't worry. I'm so sorry. On behalf of my wife, I apologize. Don't worry. We will fix that. We will fix that. He will get home. Hello, mommy. Oh, yeah, dear, come and speak to mommy. Ah, uh -uh, dear, come and speak to mommy. Simple, simple things. And that man too came home. No, 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 no. I cannot tolerate this. And as I'm speaking, the man sent a note to the wife. I'm done with you and, and our daughter. Go away. I'm, I have moved on with another woman. On the strength of, of what his mother told him. I, I don't understand. I, said, I can't comprehend the kind of life people live. How do you live such a useless life? How can your mother talk you out of your marriage? Can a man be that weak? Your mother will talk you out of your marriage. Simple things. As a man, you must defend your wife. You can go back home and then, dear, why did you do this? But before your parent, before your family, you must stand and defend your wife. That's what a man does. It's not for them to sit and talk and talk, tell you rubbish. And then you will go home and start maltreating that woman. Start maltreating her. You brought a child into the world. You don't care what happens to that child. Because your mother-in-law said that your wife is not good. Was she there when you saw her? You know, if you are in Africa, all this staying with mother-in-law, and it's a problem. Once you marry, the two of you detach completely, detach completely. For this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. God knows why he said the man must cleave to his wife. These men are weak. Anybody can just talk to them anything. They say anything my mom says, anything my mom says. Go and marry your mom. Leave these women, just go and marry your mom. At 35, at 40, hey, anything my mommy says, anything my mommy says. You are a baby, you should not, you should, in fact, these women too should not marry people like this. They can't apologize. You can't go and humble yourself and say, my wife, I'm sorry. For little things. See, <laughs> see I have realized that the things that break marriage are foolish things, are very very, see, when you hear that marriage breaks up, you will think maybe something dramatic had happened in that marriage. In most marriages, the break point is, is something trivial, something foolish, something that you should not, it should never even be a problem. That's what people will break up for. I used to think maybe there will be one serious case of adultery, then there will be one serious case of um, uh, somebody want to kill me. No. A man, they asked him, what did your wife do? Nothing. He, he couldn't say this is what she, she did. He couldn't find one single fault to lay on that woman. And he said he's not interested again. <laughs> I said, you see, that's why the Bible didn't say, he said, he said it is not good for this man. He didn't say it is not good for a man. The Bible said it is not good for this man to be alone. This man, God was specific. This man in my image, 
this one that I've located in my purpose, this one that I created, this one that carries my life. Not a man that has no sense. Not a man that is living a careless wayward life. And they are just making life miserable, miserable for many women. Some of you say there are there are there are there are women too that makes life miserable for a man. The man is the head. He should arrange his home correctly. Women suffer most in marriage. Let's look at Psalm 113, verse 6. And then we will look at um, another scripture or two and try to round it up. Psalm 113. One, one, three, and verse six. He says, Who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven? Let me read it from verse five so we will know who we are talking about. <laughs> who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? You see where God dwells? High, high, high. But look at the next verse. Who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? It is humility for God to <laughs> for God to look at us to say, What are these people doing on this face of the earth? It takes humility. Where God dwells, He should not be looking to us. You should not be surprised that God humbles Himself. Because if Jesus humbled Himself, that is God humbling Himself. And look at look at God, the creator of heaven and earth, humbling himself. <laughs> How can we be children of God and we cannot humble ourselves? How can you be a child of God and you will not greet each other? You will keep fighting. You will not talk with each other. How can you be a child of God? You aren't a child of God. Please stop claiming to be a child of God. Stop claiming to be a Christian. Claim something else so that we know where you belong to. One little issue like this. One little issue. I'll not talk to you again. One small issue. You, you are already chasing women everywhere. Deceiving yourself. Living in adultery. He says, who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? What else can we say? If God can humble himself. If God can humble himself. It's frightening. It's frightening. To, to imagine that we. We. We lift ourselves. If God who dwells on high. Can humble himself. If Jesus. Can humble himself. Do you, do you know what it means for Jesus to be slapped? And yet. The average preacher today. Just people, just, just people playing on social media and abusing them. They will react to it on pulpit. They will threaten people. Some will take people to court. Some will use their money and influence to jail ordinary people who don't know anything, who are just talking their own. Yet they slap Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had power to ask, to make that hand to hang till 2025. So it means that we that are alive today, we will see that hand that slapped Jesus. He didn't do it. So when the Bible says he humbled himself, he truly humbled himself. You are just a preacher, ordinary preacher. Nobody can talk to you. They have to lie down for you to pass. People who are older than you are prostrating for you. You say it is honor. You are you are lost. He said it's honor. What is honor there? Let's look at James 4 6. James chapter 4. We look at James earlier. So James chapter 4, verse 6. He says, But he gives grace. He gives more grace. 
Wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but give grace unto the humble. In case you don't have any motivation, uh, motivation to be humble, look at this verse. We access grace by humility. When God sees a person that is humble, he will give you grace. You are not going to be alone. Humility will not disgrace you. It will engrace you. He said, but he resists. The... Do you know what it means for God to resist you? <laughs> Imagine. You want to pass through a door. If somebody like me, I'm standing on the way. <laughs> you see, even me, if I stand on the way, say you will not pass. You may eventually pass through, but you will try. By the time this my tummy is resisting you. <laughs> and this the muscle that is inside this body that you see, that is human being. If a bouncer who is trained and built with muscles resist you that you will not pass, you know you won't go anywhere. That's a bouncer. You may even try. You may even bring a gun and shoot a bouncer. But if God is standing on your way, how can you progress? How can you make it? He says he resists the proud. They are telling you, go back to your wife. Go back to your wife. No, 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 no. I'm, no, no, I'm done with that woman. I'm done. With, uh. I pray it will not be too late for you. He resists the proud. God himself will be fighting against you. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be against us, <laughs> who can be for us? If God be against you, who can be for you? Who? <laughs> he gives grace. You know, as I read this, I'm like, God help me. So this is the path to grace. So every opportunity to be humble is an opportunity to experience grace. Every opportunity to humble myself it's an opportunity for God to release grace to my life. Can you see how much of grace we have missed out? Let's look at First Peter. That will be the last scripture by the grace of God, except the Holy Spirit wants to add to it. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. First Peter 5, verse 5. Look at what it says. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Are you noticing the word humble and submit? Humble, submit. They come together in the same verses that we have been reading. It says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. For God. <laughs> for God resists the proud. For God resists the proud. James said it. This brother, they knew these things. Oh. He said, for God resists the proud. And giveth grace to the humble. It's not fasting, no, it's not fasting. You are fasting. Stop fasting. Go and humble yourself. He gives grace to the humble. It takes, it takes humility to be obedient. It takes humility to access the grace of God. You want grace in your life? Go and humble yourself. Go and humble yourself. Go and confess that issue. Go and apologize where you need to apologize. Go and make right that issue you are running away from. Go and make right. You are a husband. God has been speaking to you. You are, you are, you are saying no. God is saying to you, I'm resisting you. I'm resisting you. 
You are a wife. God has been calling you to obedience. You said, no, I, I need to let him know that I'm educated. I'm now in Europe. I need to let him know this is not Africa. This is Canada. Okay, Canada. Let's see whether it is Canada that will lift you up when God resists you. I think we should pray. I think we should pray. And I think the prayer point is very clear today. I don't know how to pray this prayer. Because he said, he said, humble yourself. Because I want to pray and say, Lord, Lord, make me humble. Oh God, oh God, make me humble. But then the scripture says, humble yourself. So I'm asking myself, how do we pray this prayer? So we see, <laughs> the scripture says, without me, you can do nothing. So I can say, God, without Jesus, I can do nothing. So the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So I can say, God, with Jesus, I can be humble. Through Christ that strengthens me. Lord, strengthen me to be humble. You get the prayer point now. Let's pray. So speak to God. It's a serious matter. And I assure you that God in his mercy as usual has visited us. I perceive that there are graces that are hanging in the air that God wants to release. But lack of humility in our lives is keeping the grace hanging. Is hanging. There are graces God wants to release. And we are going to beg the Father and say, Father, every grace over my life that is hanging in your mercy, release it. Give me the enablement to be humble. Strengthen me to be humble. Give me the grace to be humble, oh Lord. Make me a humble person. I don't want to be humble by circumstance. I want to humble myself, oh Lord. I want to make myself of no reputation. That I will not get angry even if an ordinary child abuse me and speak anything to me. That I will not be, I will not see it as anything if my wife insult me or disobey me. Lord, make me humble. Make me humble, Father. Enable me, Lord, by your power alone. I do not want to miss the grace that you have proposed for my life. I want to be lifted by you. I want to be humble in your own sight, not in the sight of men. Save me, deliver me. From humility that is done for men because it has no reward. And it is actually pride. It is not humility. Lord, I want to be so conscious of you that I am humble in thy sight. When God says, when you will mark and say, who are those that are humble? You will be able to say, this one is humble in my sight. Men may not see it, but you, Lord, you will see it. That is what we crave for. Father, please show us mercy. For everyone hearing this, oh God, all the grace that is pending, Father, whatever you will do to help us, let those, let the rain of grace begin to fall upon our lives. Because we believe that you wanted to send it. That's why you had to come to show us what has been the hindrance. Father, today, Lord, take care of these hindrances. Help us, Lord, what can we do without you? Can a man humble himself without you? Without Jesus, can we humble ourselves? But because Jesus is in us, Father, Lord, let the humility of Jesus begin to flow through our lives, Lord. Father, give us grace. Help us, O oh Lord. Help your children. Begin to thank him for his mercy, his grace. You can continue this prayer in your, in your private moment, in your private closet, or just give him thanks for what he has done sincerely. Father, we lay it all at your feet. We lay all the glory to you. Thank you, Father. We don't know how to talk. We don't know how to preach. But your mercy comes true for us all the time. Father, we are grateful. We therefore return the praise to you. We therefore return the glory to you. We don't know how to fast. We don't know how to pray. Lord, it is just mercy, Father. Lord, we do not in any way touch your glory. We acknowledge you as the one that gives us mercy. Let's round up our prayer. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.